Mansion 2014-15 Estimates Bill Introduction. The Appropriation 2014-15 Estimates Bill is set down for first reading forthwith. The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, I move that the Appropriation 2014-15 Estimates Bill be now read a first time. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Appropriation 2014-15 Estimates Bill, first reading. The Appropriation 2014 Estimates Bill is set down for second reading forthwith. Mr Speaker, the Honourable Bill English. I move that the Appropriation 2014-15 Estimates Bill be now read a second time. It's a privilege to deliver the National-led Government's sixth budget. It's a particular privilege because this is the first budget in six years to focus on managing a growing economy rather than recovering from a domestic recession and the then global financial crisis. A growing economy supports employment and higher wages, it provides opportunities for families and it pays for public services New Zealanders rely on. Budget 2014 looks ahead to build on the hard work done by every New Zealand household and business over the past five years. New Zealand is in a good position. We've made significant progress in recent years to deliver more jobs and higher incomes. New Zealand is one of the first developed countries to return to normal economic conditions with a recovery led by the private sector. Businesses are investing, wages are rising on average faster than inflation and our export sector is posting record results despite the headwinds of disruption in international markets and a high exchange rate. Public agencies are working better for New Zealanders and getting better results. On most indicators that matter, we're moving forward as a country. If we lock in the hard-won gains we've made, there'll be many opportunities over the next decade to improve our economic fortunes and secure a brighter future for New Zealand families. Each year, millions more consumers in the Asia-Pacific region are becoming affluent enough to want and afford the goods and services New Zealand produces. Mr Speaker, our challenge is to muster the capital, the people and the skills to take advantage of this historic change in our prospects and lift the aspirations and prospects of every New Zealander. That requires sticking to our course with careful stewardship of public money, with sound proven economic policies and with a determined focus on results from public services. Budget 2014 shows a return to fiscal surpluses. There will be a small surplus next year and increasing surpluses are forecast over time. The budget also shows the economy continuing to build momentum with employment continuing to grow and wages continuing to rise. But these are just forecasts and there is a lot of work to do to make them a reality. What matters to people and families across New Zealand are the opportunities created by a sustainable economic recovery. So an important part of this budget is lifting New Zealand's capacity to sustain higher levels of economic growth for longer, grow incomes and support jobs. What also matters to people and families is that the government will support them when they need assistance. Budget 2014 continues this government's increased investment in health and education, including tertiary education. Next year, for the first time, we will invest more than $28 billion in these two areas, and we are achieving better results from spending every year. This year's budget also contains a $500 million package of extra support for children and families. <clears throat> We're able to do this because of the hard work in previous budgets to get spending under, under control and get back to surplus. This package will help young families and those vulnerable children who most need our care and protection. I'll describe it in detail when I talk about better public services. Mr Speaker, the Government's four priorities this term 
uh, responsibly managing its finances, building a more productive and competitive economy, delivering better public services and supporting the rebuilding of Christchurch. Across our program, we continue to work constructively with the ACT, United Future and Māori parties. We want to acknowledge their support and assistance. I also want to acknowledge the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable John Key. His leadership has been instrumental in the success of the Government's program and in maintaining the trust of New Zealanders through what has been a challenging period. I now intend to talk about each of the Government's four priorities in turn, but first I want to summarise the economic outlook for the next few years. The New Zealand economy has recovered much of the ground lost in the recession and the global financial crisis. The economy grew 3.1% in 2013, the, highest, the fifth highest rate in the OECD. Growth that was initially driven by low interest rates, elevated terms of trade, a catch-up in housing supply and the Christchurch rebuild has turned into a broader-based recovery supported by strong consumer and business confidence, new investment and higher productivity. Growth is already delivering more jobs and wages that are rising faster than inflation. The budget forecasts show real GDP growth of between 2 and 4 per cent in each of the next four years, with growth forecast to peak at 4 per cent in the year to March 2015. Compared to the December quarter of 2013, budget forecasts show an additional 170,000 people in work by mid-2018, and the unemployment rate is expected to fall to 4.4 per cent. The average full-time wage is forecast to rise to almost $62,300 by mid-2018, which would be $7,600 more than it was in December 2013. The Government is taking a long-term view of economic growth because some of the factors driving the economy today will peak over the next few years. Export prices are likely to return closer to normal levels, housing supply will eventually catch up and the Christchurch rebuild will peak and eventually slow. And the New Zealand economy faces ongoing global risks, including uncertainty about the performance of our two largest and linked trading partners, China and Australia. But against the background of a growing economy, we have the opportunity to do more work on longer-term economic fundamentals like investment, skills and productivity. Our aim is a long period of steady growth, delivering pay rises and more jobs every year, rather than a shorter period of unsustainable growth. Mr Speaker, I turn now to the first of the Government's four priorities, which is responsibly managing the Government's finances. Budget 2014 shows the Crown books continuing to improve as the economy grows and the Government maintains its careful and responsible management of public spending. The Government is on track to meet its two key fiscal targets. First, the operating balance before gains and losses is forecast to be in surplus in 2014-15 by $372 million. surpluses increase moderately in future years. We are achieving our surplus target while still spending $5.7 billion on new initiatives in the current year and over the next four years, financed in part by $1.6 billion of savings and revenue initiatives. Future surpluses give the government choices, including paying for new capital investments, reducing debt, increasing spending and reducing tax. Those choices have to be sustainable recognising that surpluses rise and fall with the economic cycle. And they must also avoid putting material pressure on interest rates during the upswing. As surpluses grow, the Government will be able to conduct a KiwiSaver auto-enrolment exercise for non-members. Currently, the number of KiwiSaver members aged 18 to 64 is equivalent to 85 per cent of the labour force, and auto-enrolment is expected to increase this proportion even more. The Government's second fiscal target concerns debt. On an annual basis, net core Crown debt is forecast to peak at 26.4 per cent of GDP in 2014-15 and decline thereafter. 
Longer term projections show net debt dropping to 20% of GDP in 2019 20, in line with the government's target. This includes the impact of resuming full contributions to the New Zealand Superannuation Fund in 2019 20. These projections are a far cry from the projections made for Budget 2009 that showed net debt rising to over 60% of GDP by the early 2020s. It was appropriate to run deficits and take on debt to support the economy and New Zealand families over the last few years. But as households know, carrying substantial debt is neither comfortable nor financially prudent. Making these projections a reality requires sticking to the government's plan of careful spending and responsible public management after net debt has gone below 20 per cent of GDP, we intend to maintain it within a range of 10 to 20 per cent of GDP over the economic cycle while making contributions to the New Zealand Superannuation Fund. Mr Speaker, the fiscal position has improved markedly over the past five years. Tax revenue has increased as the economy has recovered, but the biggest contribution to the fiscal turnaround has been considered expenditure restraint that rigorously tests spending for value and results. Core Crown expenses have fallen from 34.4% of GDP in 2008-09 to a forecast 30.3% in 2014-15 and are soon expected to fall below 30% of GDP. In the next four years, the Government will continue to focus on achieving better results as the main way of restraining future Government expenditure. The Government has set 10 challenging results for the public sector to achieve over the next few years in areas such as reducing long-term welfare dependency, supporting vulnerable children, boosting skills and employment and reducing crime. We are willing and able to spend more now to reduce the long-term social and economic costs of dysfunction. What is good for families and communities is also good for the Government's books. To implement this investment approach, government agencies must prepare comprehensive four-year plans incorporating data analysis and long-term payoffs. These new ways of thinking have allowed the government to maintain a track to surplus while delivering better public services. Mr Speaker, an improving fiscal outlook <coughs> means there is some room to increase future operating allowances. The Government is aware, however, that changes in fiscal policy settings can increase aggregate demand in the economy, raise inflation pressures and push interest rates higher than they otherwise would be. This relationship was seen clearly in the mid-2000s, when big increases in spending by the previous Government were accompanied by home mortgage rates of over 10 per cent. Advice from the Treasury is that lifting budget spending allowances to around $1.5 billion a year is about the upper limit for increased spending or revenue initiatives before they begin to materially affect interest rates. The Government is therefore lifting the operating allowance for Budget 2015 from $1 billion to $1.5 billion, growing after that at 2 per cent each budget. This moderate increase will provide the Government with future options around investment public services and modest tax reductions. There is room to move some of the allowances between budgets, provided they average around $1.5 billion and economic conditions permit. Allowances averaging around $1.5 billion per budget remain well below those adopted in the mid-2000s, and core Crown expenses will continue to fall each year as a proportion of GDP. The new allowances are built into all the forecasts and projections presented in the budget. If tax revenue comes in well ahead of forecast, the Government's main priority will be additional debt repayment until the 20 per cent debt target is met. <coughs> Mr Speaker, the Government's second priority is to build a more productive and competitive economy that supports higher income and jobs. A broad-based economic recovery is now well established. Through difficult times, New Zealand firms have become resilient and innovative. This has enabled them to secure good prices on world markets despite headwinds of an historically high exchange rate and lower growth among our trading partners. 
Looking ahead, there are huge opportunities for New Zealand as countries in the Asia-Pacific region develop rapidly and demand more of what we produce. New Zealand can take this opportunity if we are prepared to support people and businesses to invest and grow, create new products and services and sell more of them to the world. Our plan for building a more productive and competitive economy is set out in the business growth agenda and the budget adds a number of new initiatives to this important programme. One focus of the business growth agenda is export markets, where the government is negotiating trade agreements, working to expand market access and helping New Zealand exporters compete overseas. Mr Speaker, as previously announced, the budget includes funding of $69 million over four years, including $14 million of reprioritised funding to expand New Zealand trade and enterprises' presence in China, South America and the Middle East, and to help 200 more New Zealand firms break into overseas markets. Budget 2014 also increases the government's investment in tertiary education, research and innovation, which are crucial for sustained economic growth. This investment includes $83 million of operating funding over four years to raise tuition subsidies in science, agriculture and health sciences. As announced last week, the government is providing $20 million over two years to fund 6,000 extra places for apprentices. The budget provides an additional $53 million over four years to establish another three centres of research excellence, bringing the total number to 10. This includes a centre focusing on Māori research. The budget also provides an additional $57 million over four years for contestable research in science and innovation. As a result of this investment and investments made in previous budgets, the government's total funding of science and innovation is expected to reach $1.5 billion by 2015-16. The government is also supporting innovation through two new tax measures. First, loss-making start-up companies will be able to cash out all or part of their tax losses from R&D expenditure. And second, all businesses will be allowed tax deductibility for R&D black hole expenditure that is currently neither deductible nor able to be depreciated. These two measures will return an estimated $58 million in tax to innovative companies over four years. Mr Speaker, check duty will be abolished from 1 April this year, while 1 July this year. While fewer people now use cheques, they are still common enough for the duty to be a cost for many people and businesses, but the duty doesn't apply to other methods of payment and is simply a compliance cost. Removing cheque duty will cost $15.5 million over four years. Budget 2014 will allocate $132 million for the next five years to bolster tax compliance, chase up unfiled returns and write down the additional tax identified that is unlikely to be collected of this $48.6 million as cash for inland revenue to undertake these activities. This funding is expected to generate a gross increase in Crown revenue of almost $300 million over five years. Mr Speaker, the Accident Compensation Corporation's consistent performance is delivering benefits to New Zealand households and businesses. Annual levies for households and businesses have fallen by close to $1 billion since 2011-12. Budget 2014 indicates ACC is on track to provide a further levy reduction of around $480 million in 2015-16. Final decisions on the levies will be made after public consultation by ACC. Depending on the outcome of this consultation, the average levy for a private motor vehicle will fall by around $130 a year from 1 July 2015. <laughs> Mr Speaker, the Government is continuing its multi-billion dollar program of investment in modern infrastructure. Last year, the Prime Minister announced the Government's commitment to accelerate key Auckland transport projects. Budget 2014 pushes ahead this commitment by providing $375 million of new capital funding for the New Zealand Transport Agency by way of an interest-free loan to accelerate 
$815 million worth of projects. These projects will assist in reducing congestion in Auckland, improving access to the airport and capitalise on the benefits of major roading projects already underway in the region. Mr Speaker, the Government remains focused on opportunities to use New Zealand's natural resources productively while maintaining environmental standards that preserve and enhance the quality of our environment. Budget 2014 provides an additional $20 million over four years for environmental initiatives and to help the management of our natural environment. This includes $12 million to help local councils and communities improve the way they plan and make decisions about managing fresh water. The budget also provides $15.8 million operating funding over four years and $10.7 million capital funding to protect New Zealand's kauri forests from dieback disease. Mr Speaker, the Government's share offer programme was completed successfully 